right, uh, we have uh, Jermaine Sonwulu joining us via Skype from the United Kingdom. He's the CEO of Diaspora PR. Good morning and thanks uh, for joining us again on TVC Breakfast. Thanks for having me this morning. Good morning. Well, not too long ago, the uh, former chairman of the EFCC, Nuhu Ribadu, actually raised the alarm that uh, corruption continues within uh, this government just as it continues right outside of it. Now, with these uh, revelations coming from uh, the Senate, where we hear that the Senate may be investigating this uh, diversion of funds, does this come as a surprise to you? Well, it's quite interesting what is going on um, in Nigeria. You know, we, this is a, go a government that is standing against corruption and is trying to fight corruption. And we can see that corruption um, is, more, is more of a cultural chain, it's a tradition, it's a way of doing things uh, which has to be changed. Um, yes, in the um, civil service and also even as we see, as is alleged by the high-ranking government officials involved in this case, that corruption is still possibly in this government. It's actually um, not a surprise because I believe that it was going to take a, 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 a little bit of time for President Mohamed Bouhari to actually lead um, the, the government. Come since 2016, where we heard of what happened um, when the Senate probed um, Babachela Wal and all what happened um, in that in, in his time, um, close to 500 million um, naira connected to Bola Vision Company, which he was a, a director of. I knew that something was happening, and this, this was just a tip of the iceberg, which will come out, um, which we will see regarding um, the, um, the problem in the northeast with the IDP camps. Mm. All right, uh, uh, Jamin, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, comments from people saying that this is not the first time the Senate comes up with uh, an investigative panel or beaming searchlight on issues like this, and uh, the, people don't really get to see the. Uh, the, 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 he doesn't get to see the light of day. Uh, is this going to go the same way? Do you have any skepticism as to the genuineness of this investigation by the Senate? Well, the Senate is actually just doing what the EFCC and the other civil authorities like the police should actually be doing. They don't have, um, they're not meant to be investigating and um, probing such matters. They're meant to actually be doing their work, setting laws and all that. But in the void, in the absence of um, those authorities not doing that, they are actually rising and actually bringing spotlight to it because a lot of light is, sh is shone upon them and they get a lot of media attention. That's why they take this responsibility to try and be seen as crusaders for the people against the fight against corruption. Now, what happened the last time when it came to Babachela? Wow, we saw that um, the president actually suspended him indefinitely in April. So there was some result from the efforts that he actually um, put to play the investigation and also the committee led by um, Shehu Sani, Senator Shehu Sani then. So I actually believe that apart from just um, investigating and the government now seeing the results, we know that on the return of the president, Mohamed Bouhari from London, his vision uh, medical trip, the vice president, um, who was the active president, then actually presented a report um, to him and until now we haven't seen any concrete action taken it has been total silence so it is now the responsibility of the federal government of Nigeria to actually take action fight corruption not just find corruption but actually prosecute corruption and we can now know that the fight is real because this IBDP problem is not just about funds alone but we also know that it was about food at one point in time so who knows what it will be about after this investigation um, is carried on. Mm, and I wonder how troubling it is for you to hear that the so-called uh, Bama initiative uh, spearheaded by a top government official who is said to be part of this sleaze, um, you know, uh, what, what do you make of it that he's, he's actually appointed himself as the head of the uh, Bama initiative and the, the man who has been assigned to actually uh, chair this uh, PCNI, Theophilus Danjuma, uh, General Theophilus Danjuma retired, is not even in the loop at all. He, doesn't, he has no idea of um, you know, all this uh, goings on. Well, in the fight against um, trans um, corruption, transparency and integrity must be the watchword. And we have to see more transparency in that whole um, issue. Yes, 
um, the, the government official that they said was um, hailed from Bama and is chairing the uh, Bama initiative, um, which the PCNI says that it is not under its own remit. He's actually also made himself um, the head of the procurement um, division of that Bama initiative. And we've already seen a lot of money. We're talking about close to uh, eight, more than 18 billion naira um, being taken out for this project, and 5 billion has already been used. And they said they used that money for what? Guess what? It was for training security operatives. What do they need to train when it comes to the IDP um, camp? We have the military there. We have the civilian, um, the police to actually undertake its own duty. So we see very major ways of taking money from the system. 47 billion naira, 48 billion naira has actually been earmarked in the 2007 budget for this project. So if 18 billion is actually being taken out and 5 billion has already been spent, um, we have to actually question what is going on transparency wise and why um, though they've changed it from the presidential in the, um, um, the, the presidential initiative on the Northeast to now the presidential committee on the Northeast initiative, a change of name does not actually um, relate to a change of culture against corruption in, mm. in, in that field. And that's what we must see, not just for the, the, the government's face, but actually for the people who are suffering, the old, the millions of people who have been displaced by Boko Haram from over six states in the Federation. So this is something we must look at transparently and also with credibility and integrity at our watch world. Mm. All right, Jermaine, uh, we have often, we've heard lots of reports of the condition in the IDPs. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, there were reports of near starvation. There's lots of uh, outbreak of different kind of uh, subtle epidemics, if you have to, if I have to use that term. And the, the president was at the UN General Assembly thanking um, the UN? countries and mm -hmm. some agencies, international agencies, for yeah, helping support. and assisting Nigeria. Now, we're hearing of this huge amount of money that is being diverted, meant for IDP camps and those for the IDPs, as the case may be. What impact will these have? on those agencies who are willing to assist, who are ready to assist, countries, international agencies, individuals who have been helping and who are still ready to help? Well, it has been said that um, big government finds it hard to solve small problems. You have to decentralize power. And that is what we're actually seeing in this situation right now. Um, the government, yes, but at the moment, we actually went to thank um, other agencies around the world who are helping in this IDP crisis. And last year, they said up to 125 um, children die um, in 24 hours in, that, in, in those camps um, spread across um, the nation. But what we see right now is that we have to see the government um, do less in this situation. They budgeted the money. They should pass it on to civil groups to actually execute the project. You don't see the American government going to all these areas. The president may go there and show his face when it's a disaster, but the Red Cross and other um, humanitarian organizations are the ones who are given these funds because they can connect to people on the grassroots level to actually execute this project. But the presidential committee on the Northeast um, Initiative is actually tasked with the responsibility of creating the strategy, developing the strategy, and also executing and implementing it. That's why you see bureaucratic bottlenecks in the release of funds and also diversion of funds in this situation. So what we need to actually do right now is for the government to decentralize things to ensure that, that the money goes to where it's actually needed. Yes, human rights abuses have been taking place, starvation, even the Ministry of Health has actually been brought into the situation because they are saying that, that the people in those IDP camps are not getting a lot of medical treatment at they're not doing they're not they're not being treated in a dignifying um, manner as nigerians should be treated so a lot has to be done but it has to be it has to start by the government um does um little um when it comes to um implementation but a lot when it comes to strategy development so that those people civil um, authorities can actually go down and actually ngos to do what has to be done and connect with the people and know the help um give the help where it's actually needed mm. Uh, well, permit me to use this Yoruba expression. I seen le logbo ile dile kute. Okay. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> we gathered that this diversions actually happened while uh, Mr. President was away on medical leave. His 104 uh, days uh, being away, and all of this happened. What does that? What I wonder what message that sends. You know, is it that when the president is around, it's more difficult everybody for them? Everybody behaves. To, yeah, everybody behaves. 
Well, <laughs> you can say so. You know, um, they said um, when the Lion King is back, you know, <laughs> the hyenas, <laughs> Kings, um, yeah. the hyenas, the rats, the cats, everybody just um, flees. And as you said in your program, it's actually true. Um, because we have to see whereby um, we have to strengthen our institutions. That's the main thing right now. If we have a strong person in office who's, who is a champion against corruption, but we have weak institutions, then we now see a problem whereby in the absence of that strong leadership, there are now going to be weak practices when it comes to corruption and for the fight against corruption. So we have to actually ensure that if this kind of 18 billion was taken just in 104 um, days of the president aspect, and that is just in one aspect of the government, in the IDP um, um, initiative, how much more in other sectors of the economy, when it comes to finance or the um, or oil and gas, what has actually been going on in the absence in 104 um, days of the president aspect, and that is just in one aspect of the government, in the IDP um, um, initiative, how much more in other sectors of the economy, when it comes to finance or, the um, or oil and gas, what has actually been going on in the absence of President Mohamed Buhari in the country? This is things that we need to investigate. We actually have to prove and ensure that transparency is the watchword in this government, as the president is a great crusader of. We know that in this North East, it's not just about the funds, but also about the food. Just a bit earlier this year, I spoke on TVC also about, about, about trucks of, of, of um, maize, of um, meals that were actually being divided and people actually sharing food that was meant and reselling food that was meant for these IDP people in the IDPs. So there's a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. um, yes, on the top, there's a fight against corruption, but on the bottom, it seems there's a difficulty implementing it and ensuring that the food soldiers, the people implementing um, that fight, are actually on the same page with the president. So yeah. the right. invitation about the culture of corruption mm. must be done, and we'll okay. see into this IDP um, situation. All right, All right. Jermaine Saonlu, thank you very much. You're the CEO of Diaspora PR. Thank you for talking to TVC. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks a lot for having me.